Welcome to uh, 2022 Winter CJS Thursday Lecture Series. Uh, due to uh, university guidelines uh, regarding the current pandemic, uh, the, the, this lecture is offered only in a webinar format. Uh, so, uh, but nonetheless, uh, very welcome uh, to this uh, series. Now, uh, let me start with a few general announcements. Uh, first of all, next Thursday, uh, April 14th, uh, that's, uh, that's going to be our last meeting uh, in this time. And our speaker is Dr. Linda Galvain. Uh, she is uh, our postdoc fellow uh, at CJS uh, this uh, academic year. And she's going to discuss literally toilet papers of Japan and beyond. Uh, well, I'm sure this is going to be a very interesting topic. So uh, please join us uh, next week. Uh, I believe that the time is at noon. Uh, for this event and the future programs, well, that is next fall, uh, please check out uh, our CGS event page and, uh, of the University of Michigan. And we announce, uh, send around announcement uh, in various uh, social media. So attendee webcams and the microphones must be muted, but we invite you to use Q&A function during the lecture to submit any questions you have and present our uh, speaker. Uh, we'll try to address them, as many uh, of them as possible at the end uh, of our presentation. Now, uh, it's my great pleasure uh, to introduce today's speaker, uh, Professor Yukiko Uchida. Um, to talk about who she is, I have to say just a little bit about myself. Um, I, I got my degree here many years ago, and then uh, well, essentially, I went back to Japan to take a position at Kyoto University. And I began teaching. And my field uh, is in psychology. And our work is often lab-based. That is, uh, based on some small group of researchers doing some experiment surveys or data analysis and so on. And so I recruited some undergraduate students who can join uh, my lab. And Yukiko was one of those students uh, who joined us uh, at the very, from the very beginning. And uh, our studies focus on culture and psychology. The idea was how uh, cultures, institutions, practices, and meanings might play very important roles in various uh, psychological phenomena, such as mode of thinking, emotion, well-being, and self. So this, uh, uh, this whole line of research places her, uh, today's speaker, Professor Yukiko Uchida, squarely in the mainstream of this uh, cultural psychological research. Uh, since she finished PhD uh, in Kyoto, uh, she taught in a few different places, but eventually she came back uh, to Kyoto University. Uh, and now she's a professor at Kokoro uh, Research Center. Kokoro in Japanese, that's, uh, that's MIND, MIND Research Center uh, in Kyoto University. And uh, she's uh, doing very intensive research work related to say Japanese communities, farming communities, industries, social institutions, organizations, and how those places may shape up the sense of the self and the sense of well-being. And uh, her research is very, very well appreciated in the field. And uh, I think she, her research is so broad that she can make a very nice bridge to what's going on in adjacent fields, including sociology, anthropology, and so on. 
So uh, I'm very, very pleased and uh, to have her here. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I, without any further ado, uh, I, I'd like to welcome Yukiko uh, on the podium. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, thank you very much, you know, for the great, uh, you know, the introduction. And uh, I feel very honored to be invited in this uh, workshop. And uh, yeah, so my name is Yukiko Uchida from Kyoto University. And uh, yeah, the Shinobu the, was my former advisor and uh, in, when I was a PhD student. So yeah, that's the very, you know, I think it's a very great honor for me to uh, talk uh, my recent works the, in front of Shinobu and then also the, uh, all of the you. Okay, so uh, shall I start and uh, uh, about my presentation? Okay, so this is the first slide. So today I like to talk about the Japanese way of well-being and the examination of the local and working communities. So, oh yeah, this uh, picture photo just I have taken for a few days ago the, in front of my office. So the, the current Kyoto is very beautiful cherry blossom season and lots of people are coming back to Kyoto after several years of the uh, silence of the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, yeah, I, we, I truly enjoy the beautiful weather in Kyoto now. Okay, so the, uh, as in the introduction by Shinobu, the, um, I, my research is the mainly focus on the cultural psychology. So cultural psychology investigates how the meaning system in each cultural context, like a nation, institution, community, connects and interacts with psychological mechanisms, such as emotion, behavior, and cognition. So the uh, scope of the cultural psychology is very broad, like uh, uh, showing somehow the, what kind of the behavioral level uh, differences across cultural context. And then also the, we try to focus attention to the reason why the, uh, these cultural differences that exist, the, like I say something like a difference between the US and Japan or difference between Kyoto and Tokyo and somehow like uh, uh, today I like to talk about the group level differences in uh, within the organization and the regional community areas. And then also the uh, the methodologies and also the some varieties there. Like uh, some people do the survey research and then also the experimental design research. And uh, also the uh, recently the uh, yeah, Shinobu, the have conducted many tremendous uh, impactful studies on the uh, neuropsychological mechanisms on the culture. And also the uh, some people collaborate with the uh, evolutional psychology to find and uh, the uh, how the people uh, develop the cultural the psychological ideas and then also like uh, how this is connected to the biological mechanisms. And uh, uh, so the cultural psychology itself is very broad, but the, I'm very interested in the the uh, the part of the cultural psychology to show somehow the, uh, the dynamics between macro process and micro process. Uh, here I mean macro processes, the more institutions and the values and the environment uh, we, uh, we have in the social context, like uh, sometimes you can imagine the uh, forest uh, side of the living settings, or maybe sometimes you can imagine the, the busy street of the Tokyo areas or New York areas. And then also we use sometimes thinking about the, uh, you know, such kind of the, the road of the driving street. So the, in each context, maybe we have the several types of the uh, feeling like, I mean, here, macro process here, like a psychological tendencies. So uh, like, a, for example, maybe you feel relaxed or maybe you feel like uh, motivated or maybe sometimes more likely to be you feel like uh, you are connected with other people or you might be independent from other people. So that kind of the behavioral or psychological mechanism is quite related to the uh, macro process. Not only those kind of the photos showing somehow like a, a clear physical uh, environment, rather maybe sometimes it's more likely to be implicit, like uh, institutional levels or 
interpersonal regulation or social norms, so or just say values. So those macro processes really related to the psychological tendencies, and then the, also the I think it's a very interesting thing is uh, psychological tendencies of the, each person that recreate or sometimes maintain or maybe sometimes make changes to the macro environment process. So this is more likely to be circulate dynamics uh, between uh, macro and micro, and I'm very interested in that that kind of the process. And then also the what makes up culture and psychological tendencies is like, uh, so if we focus attention to the uh, psychological process, like uh, emotion or self ways and cognition, those things are very, uh, you know, the obtained or learned through our daily practices, like uh, uh, family settings, like uh, uh, like this is this photo shows the uh, co-sleeping. So the uh, some of you know, like uh, Japanese have a lot of the co-sleeping uh, behavioral custom, and uh, they started just uh, you know the we, we in Japanese say we kawanoji kawanoji is like a river in the Chinese characters in the kanji, and so the uh, parents and the uh, kids are the, in the bit in between and they co sleep together. But maybe the in the United States the co sleep is the less likely to be happen than the day uh, the babies have the independent rooms. So that kind of the daily practices might uh, affect some somehow like a self ways like independence in the US or and then also the interdependence in Japan. And also like uh, not only as family, but also like uh, schools and workplaces, those the daily practices really will uh, affect the, our psychological tendencies. And then also not only just the daily practices, but also like a more broader perspective we have like an institution and the human society, what kind of language we have or what kind of the policy or what kind of the religiosity that's also uh, connected to the daily practices in the macro environment uh, system and then also the micro psychology. And then also that we can see some ecology or socio-ecological environment. So this is uh, again, the uh, layer of the uh, how we uh, construct the psychological tendencies through our social or uh, cultural or uh, environmental experience. And uh, with this, uh, uh, my interest, the, I'm very, uh, I have conducted several studies on the nation level uh, cultural differences, like a US Japan comparison, or sometimes I did the Euro European cultures and the Japanese comparison, and then also within Asian uh, cultural comparison, like a Ch Chinese and the Koreans and the uh, Taiwanese and Japanese and so on. And uh, uh, but uh, the nowadays I'm very curious about the not only uh, culture nation level culture but also like a smaller uh, unit of the culture. Uh, the reason is why I, I'm very curious. The, what is the unit of the culture for people to uh, think about the uh, our values and the uh, institutional kind of the, the practices are made. Maybe sometimes we share somehow like a cultural context with the, uh, with the nation level. For example, in Japan, maybe we use the same language and the same law system the, across the each uh, uh, kind of uh, prefectures. And so because of this, the, we have a, somehow the same Japanese tendencies uh, within Japan. But the uh, focus on the attention to the some local community system, we we have sh we shared some dialect within some areas, small areas, and also natural environment. Of course, like uh, we we cannot share some you know beautiful cherry blossom with the uh, other uh, you know uh, areas in in Japan, and then also we cannot share the uh, you know the very you know busy street of the Tokyo settings in the uh, other areas. So sometimes the we have a more smaller level of the uh, environment and then also like a local uh, local rules or local customs and rituals or functions and so on. So I think like uh, sometimes we 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 have experienced 
cultural psychological tendencies and also cultural barriers in the larger nation levels. And but sometimes we uh, learn somehow more smaller community areas shapes. So uh, yeah, so culture is very multi-layered. So the uh, we always have some uh, influence from the uh, several types of the uh, layers of the culture. And going back again for the uh, very you know the famous and the important the uh, cultural psychological uh, evidence and the values the uh, published by uh, Shinobu Kitam and Hazel Marcus. And uh, this, the, uh, this model suggested that self constructs are uh, created through the uh, cultural psychological uh, dynamic process, as I shown. And uh, uh, they the, the, uh, beautifully depicted the, the, created the models of the, uh, how the, our self ways are, are created through cultural context. Uh, and uh, they, they clearly contrast each the uh, some models of the agency or self ways that are called independence and uh, and then also the other types of the agency or self ways as called as interdependence so independence model of the self is uh, showing somehow like a self is um, of course connected with other people like a, a friend and the family members and so on but there a uh, boundary between the each, each individual is quite separated and then also the clearly defined the self is uh, as as we have an inside of the some uh, attributes or emotions or motivation and so on and uh, so uh, the definition of the self is very derived from their own internal contents the uh, in, in contrast in the interdependent orientation of the self, the self is more the boundary of the self and the others are the more blurred and the obscured. And uh, sometimes they share the context and uh, the X the, uh, showing somehow the attributes or ability or motivation and the emotion of the self is really connected with the, which context they are in. So if they are with their friends, some, some types of the uh, agency, like a, a, like a, I'm a very uh, pro-social, for example, that it is very connected with the, some settings. But the, uh, uh, in other settings, maybe they feel like their self way is very changed, slightly different from the, uh, the other settings. So the with independence model, this is more likely to be uh, people's well-being is connected with personal achievement or self-expression, and with interdependence model, the uh, their well-being or self-ways is very connected with harmony seeking and reputation concern, and uh, uh, again the independence is very prevalent in North American or. Uh, middle class American context and interdependence is the very uh, broadly, you know, the prevailed in Japanese or East Asian uh, cultural context. And uh, uh, Hezra Marcos and Elena Connor, the, uh, in, in their books, they show the uh, not only East and the West, but also like uh, some other types of the uh, maybe the layers uh, can uh, be the connected with the independence or interdependence, like a gender, race, or social class, and so on. And they also mention like uh, regional areas and the workplace and so on. And uh, I feel like uh, lots of the cultural psychological studies are very connected with the uh, East-West comparisons. But the, uh, I'm very curious about the uh, if if their hypothesis like area workplace culture is very connected with somehow some types of the workplace and sometimes in the areas uh, connected to in independence even in Japanese context that might be interesting and then also like uh, if some uh, workplace in the areas are very stronger uh, interdependence cultural norms that also very interesting and in and maybe they that can elucidate what what kind of the mechanism, what kind of the cultural values and what kind of the institutional level structures might influence on um, the self ways. So the, I, I, I 
always say this is twin project the uh, within Japan and uh, why, why it's twin is really because the I uh, simultaneously the started the, this project like a local community project and the com company project and with the same types of the theory and the hypothesis and then also method. I mean, like uh, uh, I try to recruit a lot of the community area sampling within Japan. And then also I try to recruit it in the lots of the company level data within Japan. Uh, of course, this is uh, quite difficult uh, actually to collect a lot of the data from the, especially from the companies because the, they have lots of the compliance issue. And then also they really try to secret, keep secret their own cultural values and the models and then also like a psychological tendencies of each employee. But the, uh, I try to, you know, very, you know, with a smaller step with the, uh, try to, have a, some contract with the companies and uh, ask them to uh, collaborate with us. So it has taken for maybe over five years or so to get the data from the company base. So this, that, so the company that this was the. Uh, started the same timing and as a twin project, but the company data is very and uh, getting slower than the local community data. So uh, today I'd like to suggest, uh, try to show the local community data first because it's a very, uh, you know, quickly that the data collection was the going was going through. And then uh, also the uh, in the latter half of the presentation that I tried to explain the what company data, uh, you know, slowly steps on and suggesting somehow like uh, what is interdependence there. Okay, so the uh, with the twin project, the uh, I used the multi-level analysis, like uh, 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 like a cultural comparison can be applied to understand the differences between regions and organizations. And the cultural analysis focus on dynamics within groups. Like a multi-level analysis is that maybe if you are out of the from, uh, outside from the uh, psychology area, maybe the, this is the kind of the new words of the stat statistical techniques. So multi-level is the uh, each individual data uh, we collect. We are collecting the like. Uh, we do the survey study, for example, for five hundred people, and the, each such, such kind of five hundred people are uh, nested or the included in the level two data. Like a uh, level two means like uh, sometimes a prefecture, for example. So uh, we have the over forty uh, prefecture in Japan, and uh, each prefecture have the. Uh, 10 participants, uh, 10 individuals. And in that case, the, uh, each participant are nested in the prefecture level. And we can see that are there any individual differences among 500 people? And also we can see uh, whether we can, we can see the uh, any prefecture level differences among like uh, 40 prefectures. So, and then also we can statistically control each other, like uh, uh, whichever, like uh, uh, individual level differences are stronger in the statistically speaking, or maybe prefectural level have the stronger effect to explain something. Like in that case, the uh, con uh, control over the individual level differences. So this is very great, good strategy to see the, how we can see the uh, macro level process is quite important or not. And then also we can see sometimes the interaction level, like uh, uh, if, we, if they live in the very uh, Tokyo or Osaka, the busy area, maybe the, each, each person, each individual have uh, some tendencies to uh, pursue uh, hedonic well-being or maybe happy or related feelings. But if they people in the, living in the local area, they seek sometimes the uh, peaceful uh, types of the happiness. So that kind of interaction can be also seen in this multi-level analysis. Okay. And uh, uh, I, so what I am curious is about the group level interdependence. So what, can, what has created the maintained group level interdependence? And uh, because the, as I suggested, the interdependence is interdependent orientation. It, it is the, like a, a we are connected together or we ourselves is very connected to the culture or it, it, situational context, that kind of tendency is very prevalent in Japan. And, uh, uh, and 
some people say this is kind of the learned through individual learning system, like uh, each uh, individual uh, or trained as to be more harmonious seeking or as to be uh, thinking about everything that's the connected together or uh, uh, my destiny is very connected to the other person. That kind of, of course, there are some individual learning process. But also I feel like uh, maybe because the interdependence is so strong, it's not like a, a acquired through just an individual learning system, but maybe macro level learning or macro level function uh, created and maintained the uh, uh, interdependence system. And uh, my question is what create the interdependence in, uh, as a macro level or group level function? And uh, uh, the, some study, some previous study uh, already suggested the, some candidates of the uh, factors to create interdependence. One is low mobility. So mobility is the person's, the, um, the situation of the how frequently they, they can be mobile, the residentially or the say like relationally. Residentially means like a, a, the, the how frequently they the move the, around the, within the within company or uh, co uh, countries or maybe sometimes the international movers there. So the uh, the many people say and then also statistically the speaking that Japanese have a lower residential mobility. So I think the uh, especially the average maybe around the three four times of the the big change of the mobility. Of course, some people just uh, bought a house within the community and then, then moved to the new house from the old house. But uh, this, this, this uh, cannot be counted in this low uh, mobility. The mobility is showing somehow like a uh, uh, move from the one area to the other area. And this is really quite low the, compared to the American context. And then also like uh, uh, the low mobility, maybe it's quite related to the low mobility. Uh, the Japanese settings, especially in the rice farming, the traditional rice, rice farming culture context, uh, longitudinal and large scale cooperation happened. And this is really connected to interdependence. That, that was my, the hypothesis. And uh, yeah, so this is the low mobility and large scale longitudinal cooperation is very ob frequently observed in agricultural area, especially in rice cropping communities. And the culture shared mindset due to farming related socio-ecological, the economical factors uh, is quite related to the uh, interdependence. That's my hypothesis. So the, and also not only just the hypothesis, rather maybe the, uh, the some great studies like uh, uh, Townham and then also including Shinobu that suggested the rice cropping that produced the holistic thinking style and uh, like connected to interdependence. And then also the Aisha school and uh, uh, suggested the, uh, again, the rice cropping or small fishing is you know, also very connected with the uh, holistic thinking style and the interdependence. And uh, yeah, so, uh, so that my question is, uh, is this story but still the missing link is, the, is this an individual level learning? Like a farmers are very interdependent or fishers can be maybe some less interdependence. And also like uh, the other uh, hypothesis is maybe there's group level function. So farming communities cultivate somehow the interdependent, the related tendencies compared to fishing communities. So this level difference is quite important because individual level, if there's an individual level differences, like uh, uh, farmers have stronger tendency of the interdependence than other uh, people who have uh, different occupations. Uh, it's, it, it means that uh, engaging in the farming uh, occupation itself is, giving some learning opportunities of the what is interdependence. But if this is a group level, the mechanism of the in there, maybe the learning 
the system is the quite a bit different from the individual level. So rather maybe the group level function, not, not only farmers, but also no farmers who are living in farming community have learned through interdependence, somehow the uh, institutional level of the cultural settings that are given in farming communities. <laughs> Okay, so to elucidate these types of the, uh, the research question, uh, I conducted the uh, regional area studies and the large sample, the, uh, this is a large survey study for the recruited from the 400 communities in Japan, the mostly the west side of Japan, the, including the Kyoto, Nara, Shiga, and, and, and uh, also Okayama, Hiroshima areas. And uh, uh, I try to recruit it the uh, mostly focus attention to the farming communities, which have the defined as a, uh, over 20% of the population of farmers. And then also the uh, as a reference point, I try to recruit the fishing communities as well, like uh, uh, the blue, uh, yeah, blue point is the uh, fishing areas, like uh, the mostly in the Kochi, Ehime, Shikoku areas, and then also like a northern part of the uh, West Japan. And then also the, uh, not only farming and fishing, but also that I recruited the participants from the other community, like the urban areas and uh, just the household areas and so on. And uh, uh, so I uh, delivered the, the, lots of the survey data for them that posting the survey and uh, uh, they answered the, some questions about the independence, interdependence, and also the uh, other types of the well-being and the uh, pro-sociality. And uh, the survey included one question about the interdependence. Oh, no, sorry, this is not only one question, but there are two questions, but uh, the uh, I, one I try to pick up here. So uh, question is that I'm concerned about what my region neighbors think of me. So this is the uh, one of the items of the interdependence because it's a very, uh, yeah, it's a more, the uh, side of the social concern types of the interdependence. So if they are really interdependent each other, they really con start in concern about their reputation among the members because the uh, long collaboration and low mobility, they have lots of interaction with other people within the community. And uh, so they really have to be cared, careful about the reputation of the other persons. And uh, this is a result. So as a, uh, the, here's the individual level. So farmers have the higher uh, interdependence that compared to fishermen and, and others. And, uh, but interestingly, after the like, multi-level analysis, after statistically controlling the individual differences, uh, we found that group level differences larger than individual differences. Sorry, the these figures maybe you can see. Oh, there's some individual differences are really you know larger. But the uh, but the, the actually the group level differences are statistically stronger. It means that the farming areas have the higher tendency of the group level interdependence than other areas. It means that the uh, in farming areas interdependence is very well. Uh, prevailed and shared, uh, not only farmers, but also non-farmers. So here that, uh, then maybe we have some question, what promotes and maintain group level interdependence in farming areas? And uh, uh, we set up the one hypothesis. This is a collective, collective activity hypothesis. Now, actually the previous census data suggested that the, in Japan, over 80% of the farming communities regular, regularly hold meetings to plan community festivals and uh, also not only a uh, community festival, but also uh, how they maintain the irrigation system in the rice cropping areas. And also the, they have a lot of the, some settings and the events and the social interaction, like a, rich, like a ritual event uh, after rice cropping, they celebrate the, uh, the uh, 
their crop harvested and then also like uh, they have the lots of the town meetings as well so those collective activity maybe have some function of the to maintain the rice cropping areas because rice cropping is very big field and uh, they require lots of the uh, collaborative activities and the cooperation uh, not only farmers but also the uh, non-farmers sometimes the gives support uh, to the farmers the, uh, during the uh, cropping field, that yeah, cropping season. So that's that's quite important for them to keep maintenance some group orientation. And uh, and as a hypothesis, uh, we our su data suggested that in the group level, the uh, ratio of hard farmers the. Uh, affected the participation in the collective activities. I mean, like uh, if the, there's a lot of farmers, the, if there have uh, features of the farming areas in local areas, then the uh, citizens, the people uh, try to participate the collective activities, including the town meetings, the event or festivals and so on. And uh, not only farmers, but also non-farmers uh, join such kind of activities. And ratio of the participation ratio of the collective activities pro produce and influence the interdependence, say, uh, concern for other people. So this means like, um, so maybe farming is a kind of a root of the collective activities and the collective group activities tendencies. And this kind of the behavioral patterns of the collective activities produce somehow like, oh, we work together and we have to uh, coordinate in a good communication within each other. And then maybe they try to regulate their own uh, sense of the, uh, maybe the uh, values and so on, like uh, to focus attention to the uh, harmony seeking type, like uh, uh, including the concern for the con starting concern for the reputation from the other people. And yeah, our another data, following data suggested that the quasi, uh, the causality suggested that the participation in the collective activities in, the, uh, in one community the predicts the uh, year later's interdependence at the community level. So this is like, a, a, again, the collective activities produce interdependence. So summarize that proportion of the farmers in the community was positively associated with participation in the collective activities. And uh, uh, yeah, and the collective activity is conducted not only by farmers, but also non-farmers. And uh, this is the, uh, yeah, for sake of the maintenance of the community infrastructure. But as a consequence of the joining in the collective activities, the people in farming areas are more likely to be interdependent. And uh, uh, so the dependent variable the, uh, that uh, study is the concern for reputation. So some people say, oh, maybe this is very negative. So think about the always the reputation from others and the cons have some concern. So is it very happy for them or the how, why they are doing something like that and keeping this maintenance? Then actually our, another data suggested that they have the subjective well-being through such kind of the activities, like a collective activity or social capital or uh, maybe concern for reputation is the one of the trigger to be in, in uh, hold as a group member. But then the, after getting in and, the, uh, uh, and have a good connection with the other people and have a good the social bond with the, within the community, maybe they really feel like, uh, oh, they are in and they are safe. And uh, they started like uh, uh, sub higher subject well-being. And then also they, again, try to uh, uh, maintain such kind of the environment. So they, they are doing very pro-social, pro -social, showing some pro-sociality, like uh, helping the events or, uh, yeah, again, the, uh, giving their labor load to the maintaining the irrigation system. So that's, that's quite connected to their own well-being as well. 
Okay, so this is the uh, data of the local community. So I try to see the company, what kind of the things happen in the company. Uh, company is very complex because they have the, no like uh, uh, rice cropping the areas, rather maybe they have lots of the international competition and they have lots of the uh, globalization pressure because they're the big companies, especially the are very competitive with the other uh, companies in the other countries and the other countries have the lots of the uh, not like uh, interdependent the related uh, regulation rather maybe they sometimes have an individualistic or the goal oriented regulation so they have to compete each other and then maybe their interdependence and sometimes it's very difficult to uh, keep but the under, so under the globalization, people are becoming more individualist at the individual level in working context. And the Japanese employees uh, try to pursue the uniqueness sometimes, and then also pursuit of personal happiness and the pursuit of the work-life -life balance. And uh, however, interdependence is still strong at the group level. Uh, yeah, so it seems like um, if I meet individual employees, uh, yeah, I, I actually, the, by the way, I had a uh, lot of the interview with the employees and then also the CEO of the companies. And uh, so each individuals have a very uh, tendency of the independence. So they understand maybe explicitly a normal base, like, uh, oh, working is quite connected to the personal uniqueness or achievement something. So it's a very, in, in, independence is very strong. But the, at the collective level, working place level, it's still very interdependent, I feel. They, they really make somehow like a group settings and quite important, the communications are quite important. They, and they also try to keep some safety networks at the group level. So maybe interdependence at the group level is maintained uh, and uh, and then also maybe why they maintain them because may, maybe they have some positive functions, I guess. And uh, like a safety network is quite important for them or maybe the regulation under the threat is quite important for them. So it, mean, it seems like um, I, I, I always show some like a, a two story house model, like uh, interdependence is very infrastructure for working community in Japan and the group level interdependence really prevailed. But the newly built on that second floor is quite the, just imported from the other countries like the US and uh, the each person thinks like, uh, oh, they should be independent as an indiv individual level. But so those balance, sometimes the independence, interdependence balance is not good much in the Japanese company. And uh, again, the group level interdependence is very connected with the collective activity, I mean, the, in the uh, previous part. Uh, in, in working situation, this is the working together value. So uh, yeah, this kind of the atmosphere has not changed for a long, long time. When I was graduate student or undergraduate student, they uh, have a recruit campaign, like a job hunting campaign. The, they started going to the uh, some uh, kind of the large, large settings in the together simultaneously and the and the timing with the also same like a fourth year of the undergraduate student and uh, they just go to the uh, kind of the festival or fair of the showing each company's the booth and uh, the each company have a uh, the some explanation video clips or brochures and to show to recruit the good students and uh, again this is very same timing and the undergrad student wearing the same kind of black suits and uh, uh, more like this monotonous uh, uh, information but the, maybe this kind of the togetherness is quite important for them. And then also the after uh, getting job, they started working together like uh, these types of the work settings and quite prevailed in, in Japanese context. So uh, this is, we sometimes call this is a Shima Island. So each table is a kind of island and uh, uh, each person and not like uh, working in front of the wall, rather maybe they uh, face to face each other and they, in order to watch each other and uh, see the how the other people are uh, doing and uh, and easy to share some information together 
and uh, certain members of the group get together and work together. And uh, this is maybe uh, after, as a consequence, various coordination and the management occurs and norms and group rules become stronger and functioning as a group becomes more important and begin to feel that group is sharing common destiny. The, the, again, the, during the interview to the C, uh, CEO of the companies, they sometimes say something like that. We share the common destiny. Our em employees are sharing some common destinies. And uh, uh, associate job satisfaction is the interdependence then. And uh, uh, we, they sometimes use a connection, like a tsunagari or a social bond, kizuna, and communication, taiwa, and shared value and free, uh, frequently used. And in order to keep maintaining such working together cultural values, I feel like they keep low mobility to, to promote collective activities. And uh, with low mobility, they may be easy to share the task as gold. So low mobility means that, that they don't change their jobs and they keep the being at the same company for a lifetime. And believe that interdependence is the foundation of the creativity and good management. But I'm not sure is it really true or not. So, uh, so we have a chance to get the data from the under the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So I think that's a, a good idea to see the uh, what kind of regulation they have in, in the interdependent the working place context. The actually COVID-19 pandemic situation, under the COVID-19 pandemic situation, collectivism works in regulation. The uh, some studies suggested that the, yeah, the Jeffrey Sachs said the across country reg regression total death per million as a January, the Asian Pacific region has a far lower mortality rates after controlling for such structural factors that this, this mean, and this shows that some collectivistic cultural values are very uh, successful regression. And then also the other studies suggested like uh, citizens in the more collective counties of the US uh, within, so within, within the, even within the U.S., the have some if some have the collectivistic cultural values, uh, the regulation of the mask usage is very great prevalent the, uh, over the uh, other types of the counties. And how so? How about working place regulation? And uh, I, uh, as a various types of the. Uh, regulation work, I'm, uh, I think like a remote work is quite interesting because remote work, uh, it seems like remote work is very, how can I say, uh, let the, each employee the work independently. So the explicitly or maybe the in the uh, superficially, it's saying, for, oh, remote work is very individualistic perception of the regulation. But on the other hand, maybe remote work is uh, quite very, uh, lots of the shift and the change of the uh, working situation regulation system. So I think maybe uh, if the company can quickly change to the remote work, maybe they have to uh, introduce a lot of new ideas and so on. So, and also to try to have a good regulation. So I think that remote work is quite interesting uh, dependent variable. And actually we had the panel survey data uh, before pandemic and during pandemic. And uh, uh, company employees uh, 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 yeah, participated in this survey study. And uh, so we asked the psychological tendency of the participants and then also their uh, values the, among the uh, each companies. And we asked the how, how much interdependent the uh, types of the regulation or atmosphere or cultural values there in the, each company. And then also we asked the COVID-19 regulation uh, including remote work in the, during pandemic. And the results suggested that, that this is the date of the during pandemic. So remote, uh, and uh, so this figure suggested that uh, remote work and the no remote work company. So there uh, maybe uh, around 50% of the company conducted the regulation on the remote work. And they, I mean like they let uh, each employee 
uh, work at home or remote work remotely, but the half of the company in Japan uh, did not the, imp implement the remote work at all. Uh, so it's a kind of 50-50. And uh, so we separated the uh, employees the who, whose, whose company had the remote work and the employees whose company did not have remote work. And we asked them the workplace interdependence, like um, uh, the question was that my organization is a very personal place. It is like an extended family and people seem to share lots of them share a lot of themselves. So this is very interdependence, clan culture. And uh, so interestingly, who, the, those the, who conducted remote work company have a higher clan culture. So interdependent company uh, Im implement remote work well. The, uh, so, and uh, also the non-remote work company have a lower score of clan culture. So it means that interdependence promote or created or related with remote work implementation. And also this is panel data. So we check that the uh, clan culture, the culture values, the, those who conducted remote work during the pandemic. And uh, uh, we, uh, we found that the, so those, the companies which conducted implemented remote work is uh, already have the higher clan interdependent culture before the pandemic. So again, that this might indicate the uh, interdependent cultural orientation as a, uh, maybe somehow the antecedents of the implementation of the remote work. So. Uh, so yeah, now, so in Japan, maybe interdependence have some kind of the group level, good coordination and uh, uh, maybe positive outcome, I mean. So like a, a group level function of the interdependence have a very, you know, uh, might be work well, the, especially in the risk com under the threat or risk of the pandemic. So the, if the Japanese companies really have a risk aversion, maybe desire to maintain such kind of the group type level coordination because they, again, this is the easier for them to control the something the under the threat. And how it is maintained. So I mean like a maintaining maybe through low mobility. The, so to try to uh, keep maintaining that such kind of the interdependent the orientation, uh, Japanese company maybe keep low mobility the, so far. So uh, actually 80% of the undergraduate students find a job the, uh, during the, uh, their college years. And then also they uh, just keep their tendencies to uh, be in the uh, same company uh, the compared to the American context. And uh, the actually our, the, so this is the another data sampling. So this is the multi-level the data, like we collect, uh, try to recruit it participants from the uh, uh, 50, uh, six, over 60 workplaces and uh, uh, data the constituted the 3000 workers. And uh, uh, we asked a number of times changed organization in the companies and uh, uh, more than 50% of the uh, participants are uh, zero times the moving of the companies. So most of the cases, the low mobility is quite kept inside. And then also the, uh, we ask the self construct independence and interdependence and then the positive outcomes of the group, uh, like a cooperative behavior or company level attachment, those uh, positive outcomes are really, whether this is connected with the independence, interdependence in the low mobile or groups. And we found that the, uh, if they have low job mobility, this is the company level, the multi-level comparison, uh, correlation. So each dot shows the each company group. So some companies have the higher job mobility. So there are, they are lots of the employees to, uh, from the other companies, but some groups of the organization have a very low mobility, uh, maybe 100% of the employees are just uh, the recruited through the, the, in the beginning of their stage. 
And uh, uh, we ask the organization level self construal So this is the aggregate of the average level of the in, in independence, interdependence of the each participants and the scored. So like uh, some, some company uh, scoring the inter independence higher and some score, some companies have uh, the higher scoring of the interdependence. So the, here the uh, vertical axis show like the upper cases, the independence is high and the lower cases and the in interdependence is high. And there's a correlation. So it means that if the organization level job mobility is higher, then they have a more independent orientation of the culture uh, construal. So I mean, like uh, here, independence is uh, uh, measured by, like, I'm not concerned if my ideas or behavior are different from those of others at my workplace and so on. So that's uh, independence is more likely to be, they can say some unique opinion among the uh, members of the company. That's the uh, lower score that it shows like interdependence, so like a harmony taking and the concern of the others colleagues. So the low mobility, the again that produce the interdependence in Japanese working settings. And this is the last last part of the slide. So the, however, globalization has increased job mobility. So the uh, now they are facing with a kind of the. Uh, pressure of the shift change. So they, again, they keep some motivation and regulation by low mobility interdependence, but they are facing with the globalization, which has the impact of the increased job mobility. And Japanese companies are very understand the trend of the high mobility and its benefits for individual well-being, like a better choices for individuals. However, it is unclear to them, like for them, whether their benefits or positive outcomes at the group level there. And there's some hesitation in utilizing job type human resources. The job gata jinzai in Japanese, this is very, you know, kind of buzzword now. So they are very facing with the, they, whether they have to change the atmosphere now, that's a kind of the a new regulation system happened. And uh, the actually the, uh, our, again, the same data. Uh, and uh, so if job, job mobility remains low, so this is a lower job mobility group level, that data, uh, independence. So if the low, low job mobility group and the horizontal axis shows the uh, level of self-control and independence. So higher score shows independence orientation. The lower score shows interdependent orientation. And the vertical axis shows the positive group outcomes. And uh, uh, for low mobility group, maybe having the uh, independence orientation does not affect the positive group outcomes. Of course, not like a negative impact, but just a flat. So the, if job, job mobility remains low in Japanese context, independence related values like a uniquely, uniqueness seeking or saying opinion in front of others is not beneficial for Japanese companies. So they just keep motivation, however, some interdependence. But the, so here the dot the line is the uh, with the higher job mobility companies. So if job mobility increases, then the under the uh, company who have the higher job mobility, independence related values could be beneficial. So uh, so for job higher job mobility groups, if they have higher independence, they have a more you know good positive group outcomes. So. Maybe job mobility might change uh, Japanese organization types of the cultural context in the future. So the Japanese company with low mobility firms benefits from group level interdependence and Japanese company with higher mobility firms benefits from group level independence. So in the future, maybe I think some, I, I'm not, actually, I'm not sure what's happening in the future. So, uh, so now currently data suggested the job mobility is the kind of the critical, you know, the factor to uh, separate their route, keep very interdependence regression and the benefits, get benefits from them, or maybe getting higher job mobility and getting some good independence and try to seek some, uh, you know, the ideas of the independence and get some positive outcomes. So this is a kind of a separate route there. So, uh, but for the future, maybe many 
many companies trying to have the high mobility and the interdependence simultaneously. So that kind of the thing that they are seeking now. So like uh, uh, if they have a good interdependence with the uh, uh, new people or the with the and then also like a, uh, not only within the company but also the, they can have a good social capital with the uh, outside of the company members. Maybe interdependence is very uh, expanded. The aiming for openness. And if the well-being through open interdependence is successful, it could have a positive impact. The actually mobile interdependent happiness or balance seeking might be a meaningful factor promoting well-being in the future. So again, I think like uh, uh, Japanese have a kind of negative and a positive side. The negative side is very you know stuck and then also just in the uh, just be in the their own side and don't open their mind and they 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 really try to keep some you know the benefit within the group but if their interdependence can be open and mobile and they if they have a good interdependence with the new people or mobile people with the high mobility the that might be really open their door to the future the then actually the this kind of the open mobile and uh, uh, new types of the interdependence, I, I mean like a mixture of the uh, high mobility, cultural openness and uh, acceptance of the variety or the diversity. And then also like a good the, uh, feature of the interdependence, like a caring for others or ha seeking harmony or very good maintenance with the other people and the good pro-sociality. <laughs> That kind of brand is very, <clears throat> uh, be very focused attention by uh, well-being context. Like uh, this is the newly uh, published report of the World Happiness Report. This is very well cited in the not only uh, researchers but also like uh, politicians and uh, and then also some. Uh, uh, companies as well, and uh, the new so this new report has the uh, new chapter of the uh, balance and harmony. So actually, the World Happiness Report always seeking the uh, happiness in the individual individual or independence oriented the happiness, but the, uh, the currently there's and I am one one of the author of this chapter. So the uh, interdependence types of the well-being is quite uh, well accepted. And then also their types of the report suggested that the balance and seeking harmony is quite uh, well implemented in the independent cultural context as well. So this is a kind of the mixture of the yeah high mobility, high diversity with interdependence. So that's a kind of the maybe the good future of the uh, Japanese companies or and then also not only Japanese but also like a globally that's that kind of the new idea is quite important I think. Okay, so this is the end of my talk, thank you very much. I'm really welcome the lots of questions and the comments. Thank you so much. Um, if you have any questions, please submit those questions uh, with Q&A. Uh, while we're waiting, um, can I ask you a few, few questions? Uh, this is very, very, very interesting. Thank you so much. Uh, so now I have this question about uh, different companies uh, which show different degree of mobility. Uh, those companies, some companies are domestic, right? So like Toyota or uh, Shimazu Seisakujo or, uh, but some other companies are foreign, uh, right? So, yeah. you know, some banks or some, I don't know, United Airlines or Delta <laughs> Airlines, things like those. So are there systematic differences? Uh, that is, I, I imagine that uh, foreign based companies bring in lots of, uh, say, Americans, uh, European people. Uh, they encourage mobility from the beginning and domestic companies may be more conservative. 
Yeah, thank you very much for this question. This is very important point. That actually, the my data uh, does not include the foreign based companies that are maybe oh. uh, mostly. Uh, yeah, very domestic companies. But the, even domestic companies, some companies have a high mobility. Like uh, uh, it seems like, a, for example, the some types of the companies, like the insurance company, for example, have a, a high mobile, higher mobility rather than some uh, manufacturer-related companies. Because I think like a regulation is quite important. So I, uh, when I visited some companies and factories, the factory-based, manufacturing-based companies have a uh, lots of regulation. Like they really pay attention to the no mistakes. The having the mistakes is really, you know, makes the some damage for them like uh, if the toyota have the uh, have a lot of the branch office and then also the related companies and then they, in the factory they have a lot of the you know like a kaizen kaizen is really the uh, new implementation and what kind of the thing the mistakes are, are found by the employees that's quite important for them so it's more likely to be uh, prevention focused of course so then maybe low mobility is quite effective for the uh, such kind of the companies but like insurance companies, for example, they are more likely to be kind of that, try to explore the open connection and uh, getting some new customers, something it's and uh, more likely to be, I mean, insurance company, the which is based on the uh, individual, the uh, persons more likely to be getting more, you know, how can I can say, uh, mobility, but the, so, but the, uh, some business which is very connected to the company community types of areas very related to the more low mobility and uh, very domestic I think and then especially now I get some data that lots of the company in the uh, west regional that Kansai area in, in Japan so because of this uh, uh, I guess it's more domestic than the company in Tokyo area right thank you thank you uh, another question is, uh, you know, you mentioned, well, maybe you did, uh, uh, maybe you didn't, I don't know. Uh, younger generations tend to be more individualistic, uh, motivated to move around maybe, or try to seek their habit, try to seek their happiness maximally, try to get better house and better spouse uh, and by love as opposed to by arrangement and all those. Now, I wonder if that's a generation effect or age effect. Uh, the, and, you know, looking around my high school classmates, uh, they used to be young, like I used to be. <laughs> and, and now they are retiring and you know, no, no probability of mobility, no probability of getting new spouse, new probability of getting bigger house. And now uh, there's no reason to become more individualistic. So now maybe that's uh, my little town in Shizuoka. Uh, you know, only those people who uh, lose the chance of mobility in big cities like Tokyo may come, come back, but, but I think this phenomenon might be more general. That is, when you are young, uh, you have dream, but as a function of age, some people can keep it if you achieve some CEO or some privileged position, but uh, those people are pretty small in number, and vast majority go back to their hometown, typically, uh, seem to me. And uh, so uh, my question is, uh, does this, uh, well, this uh, age effect appears to be generation effect. So culture is changing in, in the direction of individualism. But maybe that's an age effect that is as a function of age, might people become more conservative? That's also a good question. Uh, uh, I, yeah. I I didn't check the the uh, comparison between the age effect and the generation effect because I, I didn't have longitudinal data to mm -hmm. clarify this point. But the, there's of course the age effect there. So like uh, uh, maybe younger people have the 
you know, the uh, lower thinking style of the, uh, you know, the uh, interdependence. So they feel like uh, they can be, they can be unique, and then also they can be more independent and uniqueness seeking, and uh, also they they believe that they have lots of chance to move around. But the the uh, the fact is not, not like that. The actually they they again the their uh, moving ratio itself is not so much increased compared to the other generation. So I think like a cultural value or their thinking style is more likely to be diversity seeking and the choice based seeking and uniqueness seeking, but the uh, maybe institutional level or structural level, it's sometimes impossible. So like uh, if they want to have a motivation to move around, but the, if there is no chance that between the companies type of the such kind of the, the you know, if the uh, chuto sayo like a uh, uh, middle age recruitment is no frequently happen, maybe they, their desire is just uh, banished. Right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, again, so the uh, motivation level or emotional level or cultural value level, there's age clear age differences. And I think like it's more, more likely to be uh, of course, the mixture of the generation and age, but because the uh, high mobility or independent seeking uh, style is more likely to be frequently prevailed for the, this generation compared to the previous generation. I mean, like a, a retirement age the generation. But the, yeah, again, I am not sure. This is very the uh, continuing. Uh, the tendencies or not the yeah with the longitudinal data it might be clarified right thank you so much i have here one question is there evidence to show that collectivist companies are possibly more successful comp successful compared to other companies that foster more individualism mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. This is a very great question. So my data suggested that the, uh, under the like a COVID-19 the regulation, the, this is the true. So interdependence company uh, well implemented the remote work and the, not only remote work, but also like uh, some other, you know, new new implementation happened in the interdependent companies. But the uh, but this is the uh, evidence is only under the uh, threat. So for the, yeah, the positive outcome itself is very, you know, the uh, definition of the, what is positive outcome itself is very different from the types of the company. Maybe interdependent companies uh, feel like, uh, oh, positive outcome is uh, having good regulation under the threat or under some mistakes, right? So no, no, no big the issue there. That might be the positive outcome. But the independently oriented company, maybe their outcome can be cannot be maybe more likely to be if even they have a, including some risks, risks, but the, they still seek some good opportunity to explore new new business or new company, new types of the you know the outcomes. So in that case, yeah, it's very difficult to compare the directory, like uh, one types of the outcomes. And, uh, but the, yeah, but the, so far, the lots of the good, the successful company, like a Toyota, Panasonic, and the, those are very interdependent, I think. The, uh, so this is not like, a, I, I'm not sure that in the future, but the, uh, the company, good company, I, I mean like a very successful company so far was the high regulation, high interdependence and, the, and with low mobility. This is the, uh, has been actually true for the, uh, in the past the decades. So, but yeah, not sure about the future, of course. But the, again, the, uh, our data suggested today, the interdependent company is the more likely to have a good regulation system under the threat. Thank you. Thank you. Well, she's saying thank you. Uh, I assume she's a female. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this is very interesting. So one question I had was that individualistic companies didn't uh, implement uh, uh, remote work because they were, well, people are suspicious 
of each other's cheating. Uh, that, that's a story I heard. I don't know how true it is, but many companies couldn't implement remote work because they, they kind of assumed that the people cheat, you know, instead of working, doing something else, uh, if they are allowed to work remotely. And I wonder if that kind of suspicion might have been a factor. Yeah, yeah, I I I agree with that. Then then I, our data some some somehow supported this idea too. Like uh, interdependent culture have the higher kind of the higher trust for the employees. Mm. No no like a general trust. I mean like a trust towards the members, the within the group members, and the independent companies more likely to be kind of yeah suspicious for the basically maybe suspicious for the regulation. And uh, if so, they, if they work together, it's okay and it's safe, but they, they maybe it's very difficult for them to believe the employees that if they scattered around, uh, you know, and then also not, not in the uh, same room. So yeah, that's very, I think it's different from the independent independence oriented company in the US. So such suspicious as maybe happen only in, Japanese independent companies. I, I'm not sure. This is my guess. Right. Hi. Because I heard that lots of the remote work is really implemented in the American context. Yeah. Yeah. I, I work from home, but I'm not <laughs> cheating by any stretch of imagination. I, I'm working <laughs> as hard as <laughs> wherever I am. Um, now, this notion of interdependence. I, when I spent some years in Kyoto, uh, I thought it, I was pretty social in a way. Well, I spent some years in the United States and I knew how to be social and sociable. And, and now Japanese style, well, I would say Kyoto University faculty members way of uh, trying to get things done in group is a little kind of avoidance oriented. So almost uh, you, well, basically best, best thing that can happen to you is to make an enemy in your uh. team. And everybody's smiling and everybody's nice and polite. But uh, once you create an enemy in your group, uh, who knows what he or she might do. Uh, so is that trust or what? So uh, that, that's, uh, that's the almost, uh, I, I thought maybe I was a little bit too cynical, but uh, that seems like a very different kinds of game uh the, the in well game in the sense that uh if you are playing baseball here to be interdependent you have to play something else so uh, here you seem to me i i think it's uh, making the enemy is less of a concern here i don't know why maybe that's related to social mobility because uh, people come and go, and I may come and go. And so uh, having an enemy or not uh, is less of a concern. But in, you know, say Kyoto University, that's a bad example. <laughs> that's where you are, and I have friends. But in many social institutions in Japan, once you get there, start working there, you get stuck, or you have a commitment in part because there's no real outside opportunity because nobody, no other farms are willing to hire you if you quit for some reason. That, that's, that comes with some sense of stigma, stigma. In by itself. So you are stuck in a social institution. And in those situations, having an enemy is horrible. Uh, just that uh, you are uh, making your life miserable. So they really work hard to be polite, to be nice. 
so that's the most greatest priority. And now, is that part of the story for, in, you know, this interdependence, maintain this trustful relationship? I mean, that, that doesn't seem like trust in my mind, uh, in the sense that uh, there's a very strong, you know, normative binding because unless you work hard, even remotely, uh, you may get some problem. <laughs> So uh, maybe I'm cynical and probably that's the reason why I end up in Michigan. Uh, but I wonder if you have any thoughts on this. That's, yeah, that's quite interesting point and then also very important to think about what is trust. So like uh, maybe Yamagishi sensei, uh, the, yeah, Toshio Yamagishi who did the study on the trust, general trust in a sociological or social psychological. The, the, his, he mentioned that the general trust is more likely to be uh, independent, each independent agency have a trust, the evaluation system in the independent oriented countries, like in the US, for example, they have a more, they, they can judge by themselves that whether this employee is a trustworthy or not. This is more likely to be an uh, independent evaluation system. But the, he mentioned that the, uh, in Japanese case, it's more likely the alliance system and the safety net system. So it's not like an in, independent evaluation of the whether the, the person is trustworthy or not. Rather, maybe it's a kind of systematic level of the kind of alliance-based trust. So for example, maybe social norm regulation is very strong. So each workers are very nice, social and polite and uh, very serious. And then maybe, and of, if the, uh, some employees that break the rules, maybe uh, each individual do not have to punish them, rather maybe a system might punish them. So it's a kind of the group types regulation. So, so I don't have to really check each individual whether he is trustworthy or not. Rather, maybe I just rely on the system. Maybe, oh, there's an interdependent system so that maybe company can punish him or her if they betray. And uh, so in that case, trust is not like a real, real trust, as you mentioned. Rather, maybe it's more likely to be trust towards the system. And uh, if so we have, a, again, we have a kind of the, for example, sharing some destiny and the company have a, you know, kind of the interdependence and the, like a family members and so on. And then maybe they feel like uh, uh, we are safe if we are on the same board. And we, we can, we, we really, we, our destinies are interwoven each other. So that's very different trust system of the, like uh, as Yamagishi sensei said, that my hunch. So that uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, there, I wonder if there are any other questions. Oh, here it is. Uh, uh, Tonomu, Tonomura sensei is asking this. Some decades ago, when Japanese economy was rising, there was much literature that touted Confucianism as a stereotyped explanation for some collective and cooperative mode of behavior, especially in corporations. Uh, what happened to that scary discourse by now? Has it all vanished? Relatedly, how do emergency situations, such as natural disaster or war, impact the pattern you describe? Do such events reinforce, reconfigure, or maybe transform greatly the previously existing pattern. Mm. Yeah, the, yeah, thank you very much for this question. This is also a very important point, like a confusionism as a yeah, explanation. And I think it's a maybe still exists. And then also like a, a confusionism, maybe the part of the confusionism might be hierarchical system. So hierarchical, uh, related regulation is the uh, quite uh, connected in the current situation as well. Like uh, so, it's not vanished, right? Rather, maybe of course that maybe positive impact towards such kind of the hierarchical system is somehow uh, maybe some people crit 
is really critical toward that, like uh, the uh, high hierarchy, hierarchical system, maybe, uh, again, the making the Japanese system really stuck and the low mobility and the really, you know, I mean, just a conservative. So the lots of the uh, uh, people say, like, uh, mm, maybe diversity is quite important, for example, like uh, uh, under some uh, situation, the, especially in the economical way, the uh, recession happened after that. So the Japanese economy was really not rising now. And uh, uh, they, they really criticize like, uh, oh, the reason why the Japanese economy is going down is because of such a kind of the stat static, uh, hierarchical system. So they try to open their mind and maybe making the new paradigm of the uh, very confusionism ideas and so on. But still, I think the the in fact this is very exist and uh, also compared to the other com other countries, the uh, those types of the. Confucianism or making some group level orientation system still still there even though but some somehow like a difference there like uh, yeah as you mentioned like uh, after some emergency situations they might be uh, more likely to have uh, some capacity to allow some diverse working uh, settings like a remote work is one of them and then also like a uh, sankyu, ikukyu, like after getting birth or having the children, they maybe try to get more uh, like uh, days off, the work, work off uh, for a longer time compared to the, the uh, economy rising period. So at that time that this is very just uh, each employees are very, very sacrificing their personal life and uh, committed every 40, 24 hours for the company. But such kind of the regulation is really banished now. So this is really kind of the, not maybe banished, like a, a, you know, try to, they, they say this is a kind of the black uh, like a black type company that it means like a very, uh, how can I say, very, yeah, no good regulation of the just uh, uh, collectivism happened in the company. But the yeah, again, the cultural settings or customs or yeah, hierarchical settings uh, or really still exist. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, time is uh, running out. So thank you so much. Uh, and uh, well, it was very stimulating talk. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. I really appreciate this setting. Thank you very much. <laughs>